Well, hello, good people. Today, we're gonna to take a look at cgdream.ai. Now, quick disclaimer, this is a sponsored video. However, I'm still gonna give you an unbiased review. I also wanna hear from you what you think about what you're about to see today. And if you happen to try out the site, let me know in the comments below. Now we're gonna jump right into it and I'm gonna show you the various features on the site, what you can do with it. And the first thing you wanna do is click on join. And you can sign up in various ways, whether it's just email, your Google, Discord, Facebook, or CG Trader accounts. I'm going to go ahead and log into my account. And the first page you'll be directed on is their gallery where you can see user generated images. Right beside the gallery, you'll see a tab for 3D models. And we'll look at this later, but basically there's a library of 3D models that you can use as reference images. They have challenges here that you can do for cash prizes. If we click on rules and prizes here, you see the latest challenges, how to participate. Looks like there's some cash prizes plus some subscriptions so that might be something you're interested in and right beside that is a link to their discord community now you'll notice right away that on the left here are various features style structure image and 3d model the corner here are various filters their versions of lauras and then on the right you have access to all your settings so I'm gonna go ahead and click on my images. I've done a few images here and I'm gonna walk you through various ways where you can generate some images, okay? So regardless of where you are, whether you're in the gallery or anywhere else, you can just hover over the right here to get the settings. You have fixed aspect ratios, one by one, two by three, three by two, 16 by nine, and your number of variations one, two, three, and four. There isn't a way to manually set your aspect ratio, but these are the most common ones. Right below it is your prompt guidance for those of you that are familiar with CFG. It's equal to that. And underneath it, you'll see the two models available. We have a Juggernaut XL. Here you can adjust the prompt guidance to whatever you want it to be. And right beside it, you'll see the Flux Dev model, which this site supports. However, there is no prompt guidance. It's probably set to the default one. Now I would have liked to see other SDXL models available. Juggernaut XL is a really good model, but again, they have really cool filters that we'll look at later. And right below that, we have Draft fast and quality in terms of step counts. For flux, it's fixed, so you can't choose that. Right below that, we have auto enhance short prompts. So this feature is really good if you're not familiar with prompting and you put something like a cat wearing a hat, you select this on and it's going to help enhance your prompt. We'll talk about that more later. And below that is an area for your seed. You can either leave it on random or toggle this on so that you have a fixed seed for a certain image. And then we have an area for negative prompts. Now, if you're on the free version, you won't be able to privatize your image but if you have any of the other tiered memberships from basic and up, you can toggle this on to keep your images private. Now, before we create an image, I did want to point out that CG Dream works with a credit-based system. We'll look at pricing a little bit later, but for example, if we're using Juggernaut here, if we choose a draft, we see down below to generate is one credit. If we select fast, it's 1.2. And if we select quality, it's 3.5. And this is all for one image. If I switch this to four images using quality, we see it now jumps to 13.2. Now the aspect ratio doesn't matter, just the number of variations and also the model. So if we select flux, you'll notice for four images using flux, it's 75.2. So flux is quite expensive to generate. And you'll see as we go, if we were to do something like upscaling, for example, you'll see that it says it'll cost you 15.8 CG Dream credits. If you add a filter, I'm just gonna click one here. Let's click two or three more you see that now it's now 0.8 adding additional filters is going to cost 0.2 credits so just keep that in mind that the more you do the more options you use the more credits it's going to cost okay so let's go ahead and create some images i'm just going to use a one by one aspect ratio for variations we'll use flux we're going to turn off auto enhance short prompts and for the prompt i'm just going to do something simple cute anthropomorphic dog wearing a jean jacket and sunglasses 
classes. We're going to go ahead and generate those. And then I'm going to do the same thing, but utilize the auto enhance prompt. You could just click this button here, which they call dream up. It basically uses an LLM model to enhance your prompt. One thing I like about their site, it does give you a queue position. So the generation speed will determine how busy the server is. I've had it complete very quickly, just a few seconds. And there were other times it seemed like it was really busy and it might have took a couple minutes at least. So, but generally speaking, the generation times are very acceptable. So here are the generated images. The ones at the bottom are the ones with just the standard prompt without the enhanced prompt. And the top ones are using the dream up one. So obviously we got a better background, nicer colors. So it's a great way to enhance your images, even with just a few words. Now, the other thing we can do is utilize the filters. And for me personally, I love the filter selection they have. So you can either search for something like, let's say cars. And once you hit enter, you'll see all these lures that relate to cars. Now, if we just select filters, it's going to suggest some ones based on your prompt. So we've got 3D cartoon, fur, cute monsters, cartoon creatures over here. Let's do 3D cartoon animals. And I see this one, magical creatures. Let's do that. You can also select up to five filters at one time, but we'll go with the two. As you hover over the filters, you'll see that there's some strength sliders here. I'm gonna bring these down to about 50%, and then I'm gonna hit the dream up prompt. And here's the result of using the two filters. Pretty cool. When you use the dream up prompt, you'll see at the very top, the full prompt here. If you click on the image, you'll notice a few more options. At the bottom here, it tells you this was created with the enhanced prompt. And this icon means that you use two filters, which shows on the side here. This cube will generate a 3D model based on this image, which we'll look at later. Here you have the option to inpaint, and then we have an upscale feature. And if you have any other tier other than the free version, you can just click this button to make it public or private. And then you have your trash can bin up here. So let's click on inpainting. It's actually a pretty simple interface. You just have your brush size here. And let's say we wanted to give him a baseball hat. I'm gonna do this really quickly, so probably won't be too accurate, but let's see what happens. And then I'm just gonna put baseball cap. And keep in mind, I am using the Flux model, so it is more expensive. All right, here are a couple of the results here. Yeah, obviously I masked too much of the ears here. Uh, let's open up this one. So it kind of messed up the ears. So I probably should have did a better job in painting it here, but you get my point. Let's take a look at the other one. Kind of like this hat and how it turned out. Really cool. Now, just a word of caution, whenever you use these filters, you want to make sure that you click on the trash bin to remove them if you're going to generate something new. Now, moving on to the various options here, we have style transfer, which is like IP adapter. It doesn't work for Flux, but we can use it for Juggernaut XL. So we can go ahead and just click import. I'm just going to use this image that I generated prior. And I'm gonna use the same cute anthropomorphic dog prompt. We'll bring the style up to 0.8. And here are the results. I'll just open up this one. It's got quite a bit of influence from the image that I uploaded. It looks really cool. And I generated a couple more using the dream up enhance prompt. Next, you'll see structure here, which is sort of like their version of control net. So if I were to import an image here, Let's use this image. I'm gonna change this to 16.9. And let's put the strength to 0.7. And uh, here's one of the generations. <laughs> Looks really cool. The next one under it is reference image. So sort of like image to image. Let's use this image once again. And the strength of the image, let's put it up to 0.7 again. The lower it is, the less effect it's gonna have. And the higher it is, the more creative it's gonna be. And here's one of the examples with this anthropomorphic dog, but using the reference image that I uploaded. Now the next one is using a 3D model as a reference. So what we're gonna do is go up to this tab again here. And you can select any of these models to use for generating images. And the cool thing is, let's say I select this, you can move them around, change the perspective, 
and pretty much set the composition any which way you want. You just have to change the prompt, use filters or whatever the case may be. If you use your left mouse button, you can move around like this. Your right mouse button, you can move left, right, up and down. And if you use your scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out. Also, you see here we have orbit, walk, which is basically the same controls we just looked at. You can untoggle the ground so that you don't see the ground. And then you have different shaders, color render or tune render. May take a few seconds. There you go, there's the tune render. So I went ahead and used that model and created some images here in advance. Here's another one, just a different type of style, right? Now if you want to import a 3D model, you can go to their 3D site, which is called CG Trader, and you can either search for something specific or choose a category here. Let's say we're going to choose aircraft. The one thing you want to keep in mind is you want to use the Autodesk F fbx version so the file format should be fbx or gltf or glb so you want to select that and you can select free and then you'll see all these various ones that are available for free let's pick one i don't know uh, this one looks cool we're going to click on free download right here now you will have to sit through 20 seconds of this advertisement but heck it's for free right and then you'll have the various downloads available here you see fbx here let's download that then we can go back here click on browse and import that file let's zoom in here you can barely see it because of the color it's untextured but there you go Let's untoggle the ground here and I can position this any which way I want. And then I'm just going to put, I don't know, jet in the sky at sunset. We're going to use a filter. I'm going to search for a filter related to aircrafts. Here's one for jet planes. And let's use the dream up prompt. And here's the result of using the 3D model. Now, another unique feature they have here is this cube icon. What it's supposed to do is convert an image to a 3D model. However, I haven't had much success with it. So I tried using this image and when I converted it, this is what I got. <laughs> So I don't know if I'm not doing it properly. Maybe we need to use a side view of an image, but I tried several other ones. I tried using this apple and I got something like this kind of worked, but you see how it kind of attached itself to like a wall of some sort. I tried another car, but it got the reflection. So I don't know if I'm doing it wrong. I tried to process an image with the model and I got this. So far from what I've seen, it doesn't work that well. Maybe they're still working on it, but I am going to ask for some feedback on how to better utilize this feature. And if it could be done properly, that's pretty much a game changer. So in terms of features and options, that's what's available with C dream I do want to go over the pricing structure here at the top you'll see monthly or yearly billing obviously if you choose yearly you're gonna get 20% off and currently the tiers are free basic pro annual and premium everything you need to know is listed here you'll see with the free version you get 3,000 monthly credits 100 credits per day and it gives you a rough estimate of sdxl and flux images the basic annual one is pretty reasonable which equals to about eight dollars a month a couple things i want to point out that's different from the free version is that you get private mode and commercial use so if you're using the free version version it's for non-commercial use and you don't have access to privatize your images as of today instead of 5,000 credits you're getting 10,000 monthly credits for the basic plan obviously if you go up a few more tiers you get more credits so keep that in mind especially if you're thinking of using this for flux knowing that the credits are more expensive to use flux some positives that i like about cg dream is that it supports flux dev i really like the selection of filters they have the interface is nice and clean pretty simple to use the features like style transfer image to image in painting structure in 3d these are all very useful for creating the images that you want i like that you can use 3d models either on the site or you're able to import them 
Now in terms of the site and the actual use case, one thing that I find a little bit annoying is that when you generate images, there's no way to organize them, right? They're just kind of here as you generate them. You can't organize them by date or structure the way it looks on my images. Like I'd like to see various rows where I can set the columns and rows. Another thing I want to point out is let's say I go to somebody's image here. Let's click on this one. This is the only way where I can see the prompt at the top or the bottom and see the filters used and all their settings. What I'd like to see is like an info panel where it has all that information in text. The other thing is the lack of SDXL models. I know Juggernaut XL is a good model, but I suppose their thinking is it's a good base model to use along with their filters. But I would like to see more popular SDXL models. As mentioned before, when you use Flux, it's pretty expensive to use and eats up a lot of credits. So to generate one image is 20 credits, four images is 75.2. So just a few nitpicks here and there, but I do see a lot of potential with CG Dream. Generates amazing images already. I'd love to see a more rich feature set, maybe some outpainting as well. As mentioned before, more SDXL models, or even adding Flux Snell, or who knows down the road, they might develop their own model. So Based on what you've seen, let me know what you think in the comments below, whether it's worth the price they're offering and if you think it's worth subscribing to. And if you want to know more in-depth techniques using CG Dream, let me know in the comments below as well. Until the next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.